What's up, volleyball fans? I'm Darren Tipton, and welcome to the VB Adrenaline Podcast. Our podcast, we will dive deep into the heart of the game, bringing you the hottest topics, prospects, and a buzz surrounding prep and college volleyball, especially the world of recruiting. In each episode, our crew will spotlight rising stars who are shaking up the national game. Plus, we will serve you the scoop on current events that have coaches and fans talking courtside. Tune in for the episodes that spotlight tomorrow's college stars, new trends in the sport, plus interviews that will keep you informed on the explosion that is volleyball in the USA. You can connect with us on social media, Instagram at vbadrenaline.com underscore and Twitter at vbadrenaline. Be part of the conversation. Share your thoughts on your favorite players, prospects, and predictions by using hashtag VBAdrenaline. So grab a seat, volleyball fans, and get ready to dive into the world of spikes, sets, and serves with the VB Adrenaline Podcast. See you there. Welcome to the studio. This is the first official episode of the VB Adrenaline Podcast, and I'm excited to get this going, and no better guest I think to have on that embodies so many of the things that we want to talk about than All-American, one of the top commits in the country, and on our way to Nebraska, Skylar Pierce out of Kansas. And Skylar, thanks for taking time today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, let's jump into it. I, I want to talk, I have about 20 notes here that we should get in in half an hour, but let's talk about what has this last year been like with high school, your college decision out of the way? Just have you been able to enjoy it? Has it still been a lot of pressure? What's this last year been like for you? It's definitely been a more positive environment coming off of last season, just having the season, knowing that it's like my last and just going out there and doing my best throughout every game and make sure I really live in the present throughout these last season of high school because I'm not going to be able to, a lot of my best friends are on this team. So knowing that I'm not going to be able to play any sports with them again and knowing that I'm not going to be coached by the same girls or had the underclassmen that I've had the last four years. It's definitely a lot of lasts coming up. So just knowing that I need to learn the present and just go out there and play like it was my last game every game. I want to jump into one thing we talk with college athletes about is, hey, I'm a lot more than just a volleyball player. And I think you've embodied that so well since we've known you the last year. It's incredible the volunteering that you do, all the other things that you do. Talk about some of that and why some of the things you do and why that's important to you. I volunteer and work with a lot of the, my youth teams at the ISC. I coach a youth team and then I volunteer a lot in the KC Mount area. Yeah, that's really important to me just to give back to the community. I feel like the community has given me so much support and love over the years and just given me so many opportunities with the clubs I've been able to go to. So making sure I get back to those clubs or my community in the service area is really important to me just to always to get back to those people. Now, what are some of the things you've done outside of volleyball volunteering, like some of the organizations you've worked with? I'm on the Win for KC board, which is a big volunteer in supporting women's sports. So we always host like a camp for women's sports just to get young girls into sports so they can see what they like, what they don't like at a young age. And then I do special Olympics every year where that's always a fun one just to oh, see yeah. the kids go out there and just have a blast playing. Then I work in the foods industry where we'll make little food baskets or kits for people and do meals like every Sunday or so. And then I volunteer with my youth team at Diocese, which I help coach and do the academies there. So it's a lot of volunteering around the KC area. Yeah, that's so awesome. And I know I've asked you before and talked with your mom before, but time management, how you have to be incredibly organized as a family and as an individual to do all that. Talk a little bit about maybe time management strategies that you have learned to help you accomplish all that plus your volleyball. Yeah, I've been playing basketball and volleyball and soccer kind of late till I was like 12. So starting from like 11, 12, I knew I needed to be good at managing school and sports plus friends and family time. So that's when I started my Make sure I had a planner. I use a planner every day just to put my homework because I was like, I need to get done or what I'm doing that day. Make sure I have a planner set out and then I bounce off with my parents, like what their play schedule is so we can see when this fits best and stuff like that. I would say the best planning strategy just to balance everything is have a planner. I think the planner is the best way just to write out so you can remember 
and go back and look at it and be like, oh yeah, I have this time to do the next day. Or I already set this time up for a call or interview. So I need to make sure I don't interrupt that timing and give myself enough time for the next day. And we hear a lot of parents or athletes saying, hey, I want to be the best or it takes commitment and there's more mm-hmm. than just being six foot, whatever, and jumping the lot you're training. And I've seen you train, you know, talk about some of the sacrifices maybe that you've made that other high school kids haven't had to do to get to where you're at. Some big sacrifices was like either missing family birthday parties or like your friends want to hang out and you know, you can't go because you want to go, you need to get in the gym, lessons, workouts mindset training and just missing a lot of friends stuff I say they always say being on the top is lonely because a lot of your friends might not have that same ambition that you have so you feel like you're on your little island by yourself while your friends are hanging out and doing this and this so you feel lonely and gosh I wish I could be there but if you want to be on the top you need to be able to sacrifice those little things because once you get past those little things that's going to just help you improve and get to the part the spot that you want to get to. And let's move right into that, the spot you wanted to get to, and a lot of athletes would love to be there. Um, committing to Nebraska, um, mm-hmm. definitely the benchmark program, I guess, in NCA, and it has a spotlight on them all the time, committing there right away. What has this year been like as a Nebraska commit and then everything that's gone on, the front row seat to the outdoor game? Talk about what the whole thing's been like since your commitment, knowing that you're going to Nebraska. Excitement, thoughts on that? Um, Definitely excited. Just knowing that I'm going to be a part of a program that has put so much love and support into women's sports and giving all the support that it needs to be at the point that it needs to be at. Even with the stadium game, like that was just a big step forward for women's sports and the fact that Nebraska was like the head front and getting that thing started and taking that big step forward is just something that I can't wait to be a part of. Like it's not knowing that I'm going to be some, a part of a team that's just not just bigger than the team, but as a community being a part of that, it's just awesome. But I think it's so cool because when you're at the top, people take shots at you as well. That, that happens. But What I said was like or not like Nebraska, they're the ones that stuck their necks out and did that, right? Mm -hmm. Other people may have talked about it, but they made it happen. Right. Uh, Yeah, it could have rained six inches that day and it didn't, but they probably had a plan for that. What I mean is be the best, you take chances. And I think that's the same way as an athlete, right? You have Mm -hmm. to do things that maybe others talk about, but you and others that go to places like Nebraska, Texas, Wisconsin, et cetera, do some things others don't do, right? Yeah. What's your feeling going in? How much do you talk between verbal and signing, like with coaches, relationships with them, building that, other teammates? Are you pretty connected? Do you feel pretty good heading in with your relationships or is it you verbal and then they back off? What's it like? For me, I went to a lot of camps before I verbally committed. So I got to connect with the coaches every time I would take the camp stairs and the players who just got to get to know them a lot. And then when I really committed, it was seeing them at tournaments, being really just instead of the awkward, it was like, okay, like at least wait to them actually. Not obviously have conversation with them because you still can't technically talk to them at tur- tournaments, but seeing them at, when I go to see, go to a games, I ended up going to a lot of games from when I, before I verbally committed and then to now I've been to a lot of games. So being able to, talk with the coaches after the games and to see the girls. And then, of course, at the official, we have to hang out with the girls a lot, so getting to know them there. And then with the five freshmen that are there, I went to the Tulsa U19 trials with them, so I got to really get to know them there too. So I feel like I have a pretty good connection with a lot of the younger girls and most of the older girls now that I've gotten to go to a couple more games and gotten to have conversation with them. So I feel pretty good going in. I want to stay, let's just stay on this. I had asked you, so you're going to enroll in January. With it. Talk about that decision, your thoughts, why you decided to do it, because this is a new phenomenon in volleyball, something maybe football has done for a long time, but this is new in volleyball with top recruits enrolling in January. So talk about that process for everybody. For me, I decided that I... Well, I considered going early on in my 
was saying here, just because I thought it'd be a great way to get to know the girls sooner. And at least for Nebraska, they have a beach season before they go into their indoor season. So that was one of the forefronts too, because I knew that I'd be able to get training in when I get there and still be able to do my schoolwork, do training, get to know the girls. And talking to a lot of the freshmen who are right there, they said going early was the best decision they ever made. Like they feel so connected with the girls now than if they would have came in in fall and it would have been like the awkward tension between everyone. Sure. Like they, they were very... Going early is just a great choice just because they're going to get to know the coaches a lot better, get to know the girls, and be able to have that chemistry before going into the indoor season. What are some of the cons did you weigh? Because I'm assuming still being in high school, 17, 18 years old, there's things you're going to miss again. Mm -hmm. Did you weigh those things back and forth? Or were you just, this is what I want to do? Not really, because I knew from the game that I wanted to... I was ready to get there. Like, I, even after, like, my junior year, I was like, gosh, I can't wait to be in, like, college and be in that college life. Right. And I knew that I was going to miss, like, the things that some people worry about, like, prom and graduation and the other senior things that you may do in your senior year. But for me, I was just more excited to get at Nebraska. And maybe I'll be able to come back for graduation and walk across. But if I don't, then that's okay, too. <laughs> like, I'm just excited to get there. Yeah, you're ready. You're ready. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go on. Talk about volunteering, your life outside. Let's talk about being an All-American because I'm pretty pumped up for <laughs> All-American Week. Yeah, talk about that process and what you're excited about for being an Under Armour All-American. I'm really excited just to be able to play with the girls and all the swag and the cool things that they have for us set up for it. And the fact that it's in Orlando is pretty cool too. And just watching the game last year and seeing all the content and stuff that they created from last season i'm really excited to be able to hang out with the girls and get to know everybody and then just have that experience with all of them yeah we're excited too and it's growing i think it's another sign of the growth of volleyball yes um, for sure and i know we've talked with the under armor people zima and mike have been awesome and we're going to be on site so more interviews for you guys more microphones in your face but that's what being an all-american's about mm -hmm. excited have you seen like your roster, anybody you're excited to play with. I'm sure from the national team stuff, you've played with a lot of these girls already. Mm -hmm. I played with a lot of the girls that are there, so I'm excited to see them again because it has been way too long from seeing them, so I'm excited for that. But then honestly, just to meet all the new people because I think I like know like 12 of them really well, but there's like the other half that I'm still like don't exactly had a conversation with, so I'm really excited to get to know everyone. Yeah, and I would assume four days together, or I think that's, mm -hmm. I think that might be what it is. Four days yeah. together, you get to know them uh, pretty good uh, mm -hmm. on, on a different level. But so on something like that, is it, I know it's a celebration, but when you get on the court time, do you think the competitive competitiveness kicks in or is it more like a exhibition? I think with the people that they have chosen, I think a lot of the girls have that competitive mindset. So I think we're all going to be friends off the court and laugh or whatever. But once we step on, I think all of our competitive natures are going to kick in and start playing. And then after we're done playing, we lose. I think everyone's just going to be good friends, whatever else. But I think once everyone steps on the court, it's going to be locked in game time. I We've, Adrenaline, we've copied them for years. I think the jersey presentation for the kids that make it is one of the coolest traditions mm -hmm. what was that like when i guess you knew because you got an automatic bid wait last spring right yeah so you knew but what was that like when you got presented with the jersey for me they did it they sent it to my school director and then we had a, our assembly that week so they on one of our assembly days they came in with it and i had no idea they were doing this and it was the Friday, I think before homecoming, and it was our assembly that day. And our AD was just on the mic talking, whatever. And he goes, I'd like to congratulate Skylar Pierce and bring her down to the floor. And I was like, me? I was like, what? So then I walked down to the middle floor and he had the Under Armour box and opened it up. It had the Leatherman jacket and the jersey. Yeah. And it was just so cool because it was all my classmates like in the gym with us and they like all stood up and applaud me. And it was just a crazy out of body experience. Yeah. I think the Letterman jackets this year was such an awesome touch. Yeah. They're sure. They're really yeah. Cool. Yeah. I looked at those and I'm like, 
dang it, I wish I had Under Armour's budget. Mm-hmm. I, we would do that for the Midwest battle, but we, that is with the jerseys and all that, when we put that idea into action, it was literally copying what Under Armour had done. I think it's such a class and, yes. and should be for the best in America. Yeah. Oh, uh, what about when you get down there, anybody you're really excited that maybe you haven't played with before, you're excited to play team up with them that you haven't before? Ooh. Put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I've either been on the same court as most of the girls or played with them. So there's a lot of them that I've had the opportunity to play with. So really anybody, just because I didn't get that much time playing with all the girls, so just having the opportunity to play with them with anybody again will be a fun experience. Yeah. How about anybody that you really want to go up against on the other side of the net that maybe you really want to get a kill off of or a block against? Nobody in particular, because I re- honestly, with all the girls that I've seen that have posted the Under Armour jerseys or they've given me Under Armour jerseys to at camps, everybody just, they're all people that are good people on the court and outside of the court. So there's nobody that I'm like, gosh, I really just want to get this kill on her. I really want to <laughs> block this girl. Because quite frankly, we're all, I think we're all friends or will be friends throughout this throughout the season and throughout these four days together. Yeah. So there's no way in particular that I'd say that, gosh, I really just need to get this kill on her. I'm just excited to be with the girls again. And I think it's so awesome. I say that to adults all the time. I think it's the adults who have a lot more of the rivalries, the young adults, like you do a great job of, Hey, it's just on the court, off the court. We can be friends and, and whatnot, but it is fun to watch uh, the competitive nature crank up in events like that. Oh yeah. As soon as it's live, you forget that you were just uh, hanging out and taking selfies with somebody 20 minutes earlier. Mm-hmm. So that'll uh, be fun. But let's talk about your mental training. I, I think you're so far ahead of the game and working with Jess. How, how did that start? And how has that helped you? Tell everybody what you do a little bit with Jess and how it's helped you. Okay, so I started my mental training, like really started it with Jess at the end of my high school season last year. The season just, I didn't play or perform the way I wanted to. Mm-hmm. So I, we reached, we found Jess and Doc there and they recommended me to Jess and we just, she's opened a lot of doors that I feel like in walls that I've had up across the years. Just letting those walls down and being comfortable with myself and building that confidence again was something that we really have been working hard to build especially going into Nebraska in a couple months. And most of the big things that we were just talking about is just being comfortable with each other because talking about those feelings and those walls that I've I've put up over the years and really just getting down to the nitty gritty about why I'm feeling this way or why I react to things that way. And every night I'll journal my notebook, like how the day went and like what happened throughout the day and stuff like that. But most of it's just been building my mindset on the court Making sure I'm confident, not worrying about, okay, I made one mistake. Let's go to the next play. Let's not worrying about the past at all. Just being really present and being more confident in myself and who I am as a person. I love that, Skylar, because I even think when, when I think of the mental training, I'm like, oh, it's being able to block off a, a bad swing. But what you're saying is it's so much more of the mm-hmm. off the court and building that, which will lead to you being better on the court. Yes. Yeah. And so is it, talk to people, like, what do you do? Is it a conference call? Is it workbook? Like, how does the program work, what you've been doing? For me, Jess, we FaceTime usually once or twice a week, or she'll be in town. Like, even, like, on Sunday, she was in town because she's working with one of the clubs here in KC. So we went and got dinner and just talked about, like, how the week's been going and all the crazy things that have gone on across the weeks. And it's mostly just... FaceTime, she'll have like questions for me or like assignments that I have to do for myself. But like one of the assignments was like writing a paper and just putting down all the feelings that I felt about a certain topic. Or for me, I'm really crafty. So she'll have me like make a craft that like resembles what I'm feeling and like stuff like that. Just good icebreakers because the most important things in in the beginning for us was to get connected to each other and trust. Because for me, I trusting people is so it takes a minute for me to trust somebody. Getting in the beginning, it was just us 
make sure we build down those walls and really found a way to trust and connect to each other because the best way for us to get to know each other and for her to be able to help me was for me to break down those walls and build trust in between us. And, and that's going to help you because that's becoming the top programs all have that and mm -hmm. use it quite a bit. I know Nebraska's again in the front, a front runner for that, but talk about what have they told you at Nebraska that they do for the mental training and just the mental health help while you're there? I know some of the girls on the team do work with Doc and Jess, and I know that they've been in their gyms every once in a while just to get a read on things. But they also have a mental, mental people that work there too that just give feedback or if you're feeling down and just need to like talk to someone, they're always there too. So I know they do a lot of mental training while they're in the, while they're in season and even out of season. Okay, so let's move on. I want to ask going to Nebraska, and you and I have talked about this at bits and pieces before, but as a former college coach and everybody wants to talk about recruiting rankings and blah, 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 blah. But when you get there, how competitive it is, how are you preparing yourself for January, but next year where I always say, when I talk to parents, the hardest thing about freshman year with being away from home, right? A new coach, pressures of school and, and an organization, but it's also every single person was an alpha when they were in club, right? Mm -hmm. And how are you preparing? How are you looking at that heading in to that gym and that locker room, knowing that everybody is as good as you are and they've been there before? Right. For me, I've done, been doing a lot of training throughout the years, but especially now just getting in the gym, mental training, still continuing seeing the practice, the little things. I'm still going to dynasty and practicing with the teams there too, just to make sure I'm getting touches and reps in. But Going into Nebraska, I know that they have the top hitters there, and I know there's just girls in front of me. And for me, it's not its not that I'm scared to go in and compete. I'm excited to go compete because I know going against the top outsides are going to just make me a better player in the end. So I'm more of just excited to y'all compete against these girls than nervous or worried about it. So talk about, let's talk about Nebraska, and you're heading to there in January, and I ask or wonder about recruits all the time going to programs that are very deep. What's your thought process heading in, knowing that you're going into a locker room and a program that has so many talented athletes already? And how are you going to approach that? For me, I know that I need to go get stronger, get faster, get my mindset to the, as best as it can be going in. Because especially with my mindset, I want that to be something that I'm not trying to fix mid-season. I want it to be something I'm already comfortable and confident in. So just make sure, like right now, I'm getting practices in at Dynasty, getting lessons done, working out three times a week. Just make sure I do all the things that I can do to be best prepared going into Nebraska. And then getting there, I know that there's the top outsides and top hitters and players on Nebraska's team. But for me, I'm not like worried going in. I'm just... I'm not worried about, oh gosh, I'm going to go and not play my first year. Like I know that might be the case. I just excited to go compete against the top outsides because I know learning from them and playing against them, I'm going to learn so much just from being in the same gym as them and having that support, knowing that they want me to get better just as much as I want them to get better. So I just know going into it, that I'm more excited than worried about, gosh, I'm going against the top outsides. I'm just excited to learn from them. Yeah. And, and, you and I have talked before, you understand how big of an opportunity that you have that will come, even though it doesn't come, it may not come immediately. Yeah. yeah. And I know with your recruiting, it's really important. Your family, which we haven't touched on a lot, it's important that your family be so close so they can watch you play and be around because I know your family's huge for you, right? Yeah, that was definitely one of my deciding factors when choosing where I wanted to commit to was making sure that my family would have close enough range where it was like space away from them, but close enough where I knew that they would be able to come to whatever games they wanted to. If a freak accident happened at home, I knew that I'd be able to get back if I needed to. Yeah. And we'll wrap you up here with, with a couple more, but I want to ask you, you have built your social media following organically and over the years, but just being you and not doing anything crazy, just highlights you play in, just interacting, but you have a great following. Is this something with the big, everybody talks about NIL now. 
is, is something was that in the back of your mind or how did that happen? Was that part of the plan setting yourself up for potential NIL when you got to college or were you just being you? Honestly, NIL wasn't one of the things that was on my mind when I started my Twitter, Instagram, trying to build my following. It was more of just wanting to get, show other players different ways. Because for me, I started my Twitter because it helped me get recruited, just putting my highlight reels out there, posting schedules, doing posting stuff that I was doing outside of sports so they could get to know me without us actually having a face-to-face conversation because I feel like that was a big thing for all the colleges that I ended up talking to, just so we got to know each other without us breaking the like, the rules. Yeah. So for me, it wasn't about like building building that following. It was more just sharing my life and just sharing what I do day to day and just sharing me. Yeah. How do kids talk about it though with NIL now? Is that exciting? Have you still thought much about that? That you go in and I've always been in favor of it especially some of the kids at Nebraska, it's pretty cool that you may have the potential to earn money Mm -hmm. while you're playing for being you, a reward for all that work you put in. Yeah, I think NIL is a really cool thing. You don't, you haven't seen it a lot in like other sports other than football. So the fact that it's like growing into other sports and everybody's getting opportunity to have those NIL opportunities is really cool thing. And I think it's great just because you put in so much work and sacrifice in all your time to be the person and the best player that you can be. I think it's a cool thing that now I guess you're getting paid to do those things, but also right. you get to create content for other people and build your yeah. media in that sense too and get your name out there a little bit more. So I think it's a very interesting, cool thing that the athletes now get an opportunity to do. Yeah. And, and I'm guessing you're going to be at the, the forefront of that with all that you've done and, and, and with your following. But so, you have always been great about younger girls and knowing that younger athletes are looking up to you. You do a good job realizing that. Now you've been through the recruiting. You've been through your high school career is over. What going back, would you look back to maybe 14, 15 year old Skylar or somebody who's in those shoes? What's the advice you have for them now? With that recruiting, with training, with any of it, what what's some good advice you could give to those girls that are where you were a couple of years ago? So advice that I would give the younger girls is just to live every day in the present just because time really does fly by and you don't want to take anything for granted. And then if you want to be the top athlete, you're going to be having to make those sacrifices and really going to have to figure out a way to balance those spring groups, that school work, other sports. It's definitely draining, but the reward at the end of the tunnel is so worth it. And just to have a blast. Volleyball is such a fun sport. You get to meet so many amazing people, coaches, family members from your friends that you may meet. Just have a blast with it because volleyball is one of those sports that you just connect with everyone. All right. And last thing, what would be a bit of recruiting advice for who's getting anxious, right? Those 26s now, the 26s now that are getting ready. What's your best bit of advice? Gosh. For, I know you decided early, but just how to take on these next six months, which can be really stressful. For recruiting wise, I would say just making sure that you have a Twitter account that you've started or like an Instagram for like straight volleyball. So then coaches can see what you're doing, but also like posting your highlight reels. Coaches can respond back to you, but sending out your emails to like your top 10, like your top 25 of what you've been up to or like what your schedule is. So then you'll know if they come and watch your court. Oh, they're interested in me too. And then a big thing would just, just to share your, what you're doing outside the court. Cause yeah, coaches want to see, oh, does she have, what skill work is she working on? Or does she have this and this? But they also want to see who you are as a person outside of volleyball. Because everybody knows that you're not just a volleyball player. There's other things that you're involved in. So they also want to see those other sides of you. Because they're not just recruiting you because of your skill. They're recruiting you to see if your personality and the person that you are will connect well with the team that they already have. That's perfect, Skylar. Every time we talk, I think I become a little bit bigger fan and appreciate, respect you even more. You are so awesome. And we thank you 
for taking your time. And hey, everybody, uh, I think we are out of time and that's going to be a wrap uh, for our really our first episode of the VB Adrenaline podcast. And if you want to keep the volleyball conversation going, connect with us on social media. Instagram is at VBAdrenaline.com underscore. And on Twitter, it's at VB Adrenaline. Please share your favorite moments, talk about players, give Skylar a, a high five on the job that she did and comments on anything that was sparked today by our conversation. And we'll be back in the future talking with more rising stars and everything volleyball. If you enjoyed the episode, please share with others and leave us a rating and a review. And until next time, thanks to the volleyball adrenaline community. Take care.